Hello, and welcome to the Alchemist Inkwell. This is your spiritual podcast for grounded people. You sounded so calm, I had to try. (laughs) I know. I was like, oh, library boys. Hello, and welcome to... (laughs) I have one of those. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Where do I get one? Uh (laughs) So anyway. Because being raised in a public library has its perks, or a school library has its perks. I guess so, yeah. So Mm. you are, sorry I interrupted you. Oh, yeah. I'm Emily. Hi. <laughs> I'm Crystal Lynn. <laughs> we were just In talking non-library about how chaotic voice. we are. <laughs> oh. Honestly, I genuinely for a while thought about narrating audiobooks because I'm really good at it. <laughs> it's like a special skill. Um, I just don't have the time or anything like that, but it's. I'm glad my talents can be enriched. <laughs> it's, it's quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. I can see why <laughs> meditations are always so great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Well, hello, everyone. Um, Happy Monday or happy Thursday. It's Monday for us. Never mind. Disregard. It's Wednesday for the Patreon group. It's Thursday for the (laughs) the release of everything else. Yeah. And if it is Thursday, happy almost Mercury Direct Day. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (gasps) That is Friday. (laughs) Woohoo. Thank God. We are excited. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. Me too. I will say it hasn't been, it doesn't feel like Mercury retrograde usually feels is how I'm going to put it. Yeah. This one has been a lot more cerebral. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot more overarching structures, which is what we thought it would be. But the interesting to see the difference of feeling that comes with that on a very personal level. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I absolutely do. Cause you know, one of the things we predicted was that Mercury was going to go rogue with nobody telling it what to do. Yes. And I think if you were someone wanting change, that was actually mm-hmm. in your favor. Um, yeah. And so a lot of us are like, I just need this to move or to even loosen up so I can do something with it. You know, it felt like we were working with very tight, compact soil and mm-hmm. Mercury has been tilling it and saying, hey, don't plant yet, but at least we're going to get some nutrients back in the soil so that when you do plant, it'll mm-hmm. grow, um, which is a very yeah. Virgo. Your vision. Your vision of what Mercury was doing is a lot better than what Mercury was doing. Well, that's because when you're like, Mercury's, Mercury's going wrong with therapy. <laughs> so. When I saw, so by the way, I still haven't found Hermes the hamster. And oh, um, no. I know. So for the record, I went to tune in to like talk to Hermes on, I think it was Friday mm-hmm. that I was trying to talk to him. Yeah. I was yeah, trying to talk to Hermes on Friday, which is, of course is Mercury. And I got so shut down so aggressively. Like, well, where's your hamster? I'm not talking to you unless you have the hamster. I was like, first of all, you were mad at me about that hamster. Mm-hmm. And second of all, now I need to have it in order for you to talk to me. Like what a big dick move, but fine. Like, yeah, I still have not found it. So I haven't been able to talk to Mercury very directly, but when you said Mercury going rogue, I got this image. My guys just like spammed it to me. Was, I'm sure it was Apollo just trying to mess with Hermes mm-hmm. um, of Mercury, like a planet, but with little arms and little legs at a football game streaking across the field. Just uh, full very- nude. Yeah, like, very Hermes what? thing to do for sure. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. I was like, wow, you're like, he's tilling the soil. I'm like, or he's streaking at a football game, I guess. Well, and see, that's also a really great example <laughs> of Mercury's relationship with different people. Because for me, the Mercury yeah. in Virgo is on my midheaven, ruling my house of good spirit, right? So Mercury mm-hmm. actually represents the good fortune in my life, which right. is pretty chaotic. Um, but you know, organized <sighs> and whatever. For you. Mercury actually is kind of in the, the ulterior position because you have, uh, it's Virgo in your 12th, right? Mm -hmm. So Mercury is your more chaotic spirit. Mm -hmm. And so it's the relationship that we have like a natural bond that we cultivate and we start from different places. And, uh, yeah, so it, it makes sense that we have different like personality type mixes with Mercury. Yeah. It's just funny to see that directly yeah. pop up. Yeah. I'm like, wow, my soil doesn't feel tilled, but I definitely feel like I just watched Mercury <laughs> naked yeah, running but- through a field. <laughs> so what Mercury has been keeping from me is finding a house. You got a mm-hmm. house. So it's been like this, this, like we're, we're both on like a grass is greener situation with each other right now. I'm like, like super excited for the other person and waiting for our turn for the thing. I know. Like, like hobbits. Oh. Are- oh. 
Yeah. Anyway, um, Mercury is going direct this Friday. So for this yeah. episode, it's probably going to be kind of one of our shorter ones, but we wanted to talk about some just kind of big astrology and energetic mm-hmm. stuff happening this week. Cause there's a couple big things kind of going on, yeah. um, that we wanted to make sure that we addressed. And then we do have some amazing votes from our patrons for next week's episode. So we're going to definitely do one of those Patreon episodes, mm-hmm. um, that they voted on next week. So I just wanted to touch on that right off the bat so that we know mm-hmm. what we're doing. <laughs> The week after, which will also be a bookend episode, again, we will be together. Yeah, this is true. We will be together. It's so funny. I keep talking about, um, I keep talking about like, oh, and my house looks like this. And I'm like, well, never mind. You can just see it next week. Yeah, I'm going to be there. (laughs) Chris is going to be here. We get to hang out. It's so fun that as our business has evolved and like our partnership has evolved, that we get to see each other more times a year. Yes. Like in person. Oh it's yes. super cool. Like at, we're, we went from seeing each other for maybe like twice a year mm-hmm. in person to now seeing each other like five times a year or more in person. Yeah. And that's really neat to me. So it's also I appreciate really, that. I, I will tell you one of the things that I love about it is our energy is really good, comforting and supportive when we're on calls like this together. But when mm-hmm. we're in person together, that support becomes even more palpable. Yeah. And it's such a nice, like energetic calm which Mm -hmm. is really cool. Yeah. Also just going to tease that you might get to feel that in person with us at some point um, in the future ish, near ish future information to come. Well, (laughs) we already have Italy out there and we are um, with the forgotten storytellers. Uh, We're accepting pitches again. So there's two opportunities already, but there are more. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So on that note, Hey, come to us, come with us to Italy. Let's go eat pasta together um, and do magic. That's what we're going to do in Italy. Pasta mm-hmm. and magic. You should come do that. Yep. It's going to be really cool. We're really excited about it. Um, we do have a couple spots there. And then also, as Krista just said, the Forgotten Storytellers pitches are open. Um, so if you want to write a fiction book, you've always dreamed of writing a fiction book, especially a fiction book that has a higher vibration impact on the world that heals the world and you want to do it in alignment with your astrology and your magic and your spirit guides and that's what we do and you should come hang out with us <laughs> yeah. and then you get to talk to us every week plus hang out with us in person which is super fun yeah absolutely um yeah so let's talk about some of the astrology for this week because yeah. before mercury goes direct we have a new moon we do yeah so um Tuesday and Wednesday are pretty chill. You're listening to this probably on Wednesday or Thursday anyway. So this is really opportune. Thursday, we have the new moon. The new Mm -hmm. moon is exact at about 9.39 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're listening to this when it releases at around sunrise on on, uh, Thursday, you still have tons of time to prepare. And again, I'm someone who's like, after the new moon and after the full moon is probably the better mm-hmm. time to do stuff anyway by an astrological mm-hmm. magic perspective. Um, so you got tons of time to be like, oh, I want to do this. And here's some stuff you should do. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about this um, with the Forgotten Storytellers cohort on Friday, but I thought a lot of it was really helpful and really good advice. This yeah. is a new moon in Virgo. The spicy part of it is that it is trine Uranus. So trine Uranus means that, you know, we we went through a lot of stuff happening in Leo where that was square Uranus. Now we've got the trine. So where we had some conflict with change and maybe uncomfortable change that maybe had a bit of an ego um, element to it. Now mm-hmm. we have the, you know what, it's worth it to do this. I'm ready to do this. It's going to make my life better. It's sort of like um, uh, kind of if you were astrologically hiring an assistant, <laughs> to help you reorganize your life that would be That's this fair. Virgo new moon yeah the way i described it to our forgotten storytellers on friday was uh manifestation through organization yep so like organizing things in your life so that your manifestations can come to you whether that is um you know you have to clear out some space or you need to move things around or you need to really understand your why are you manifesting this thing and i really want to encourage with this new moon specifically of like okay, you're calling it a manifestation. Why? And yeah. instead of manifesting that specific thing, manifest that why mm-hmm. and flip that, which is very similar to what you're kind of getting. And, you know, with your assistant, it's kind of that same thing. It's like assign your assistant, mm-hmm. astrological assistant. I want this thing. However, that comes to me. Can I please have that thing? But less in a, I want this, you know, I want 
a new job and more of I want financial stability and security Mm -hmm. in a place that makes me feel happy and aligned. Yeah. That's what you're manifesting versus a new job. Yep. I want the the feeling of security and I want to feel aligned and Mm -hmm. a new job might help with that, but something else might as well. So don't limit yourself, but also the new job is Mm -hmm. probably what happens. It might just be a better job than you expected or a different job than you expected. It's kind Mm -hmm. of like when you have a guest coming to stay, this is the whole, when the, when in manifesting that step where they're like, make space for it. And I remember when I first heard that, I was like, what are you even talking about? So right. what they mean is a lot like when you're having a guest coming to stay and it's because mm-hmm. you have a spare room for them, or you like some people go all out and they put out little um, shampoos, like thinking about what the guest is going to need. And if you know a lot about the guest personality, you might even put out like magazines that they like or whatever. It's preparing Mm -hmm. to receive the, the nature of that energy or that person that is going to be coming into your space and into your life. How can you Mm -hmm. prepare to receive them? Um, And so if you think about it that way, With your goals, specifically looking at maybe where Virgo is on your chart, what house Virgo is inhabiting, Mm -hmm. you can get some really good ideas of where that's coming. And also keeping in mind that this is our last new moon. And I'm just checking myself here. This is our last, yeah, last new moon before eclipse season. Yeah, it is. Yep. I've been thinking about that actually, which is again, that manifestation for the organization because we're going to hit eclipse season and it's not, and we always say like, we don't encourage you to manifest or to cleanse or anything during eclipse season. It's more like, okay, I'm going to let the universe do what the universe is going to do with this eclipse for me. However, if you want to, of course you still can, it's your choice, but it's kind of like saying, Hey, in this tornado, I'm going to pick which cow hits me. That's hard to do. Um, that's what eclipse season is. And we'll do a whole, obviously eclipse episodes and stuff like that. But for this one, get those ducks in a row so that with eclipse season, the universe is bringing the things you want that you're manifesting now. Yeah. And it also feels a little bit like getting ready to go go camping, like pack Mm -hmm. your snacks that you're going to like, make sure you have what you need to keep yourself warm. If you're warm, if it's going to rain, make sure you have something to prepare for rain. So it's just like, I know that a lot of unforeseeable things are ahead of me, but I'm going to pack things that can help guarantee my comfort in uncertain situations because I have the frame of mind right now and the resources around me to create that space and that structure, uh, Mm -hmm. which is where Virgo comes in, especially since Mercury is on the stationary degree, almost to the minute this day too. Mercury is standing still for this lunation that Mercury rules. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And with Mercury going direct, as with every retrograde going direct, make sure you like take a second and think back on Mm -hmm. how the last two and a half, three weeks went for you. Like, what happened? What did Mercury teach you? What came up? What broke? (laughs) What things did you have to get fixed? I had to call the fire department one day. It was so fun. (laughs) Yeah. And like what stalled out, you know, Mm -hmm. what were you working on that stopped and now how might that move forward? And what have you learned about it in the meantime, that makes you move forward more knowledgeably and, you know, Mm -hmm. in a wiser position than you might've been in before. Yeah. What have you fixed? <laughs> mm-hmm. And and like, what's been telling you it needs fixing? And if you haven't fixed it yet, do you have the opportunity to do that now? It's a great time for that. We have a ton of Virgo energy to work with. Yeah, I fixed my dryer because it was leaking gas. Hence why I had to call the fire department. It was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now you don't little have things, little honestly, things. <laughs> again, kudos to you because a gas leak is no small thing. And you did a really great job uh, recognizing oh, that and doing something you. about it. Yeah. I will say, and I, I, I'm willing to speak about this here because it's our podcast and we kind of have some radical honesty stuff. Um, I, a big, big, I don't want to call it a limiting belief because it's not a limiting belief. It's just something that has always happened because I'm a woman and this happens for all woman or feminine presenting people. Um, I have a huge distrust of authority believing me. Mm -hmm. And so calling 911 for something like a gas leak my husband wasn't here and it was so triggering which is again mercury energy coming in because Mm -hmm. it was like oh cool they're gonna come and they're gonna tell me it's not actually a thing and they're not gonna believe me and then i'm gonna have to fight for it and i'm so tired of doing that and i know this is a very similar experience for a lot of people because it's been every doctor i've ever seen i've had to do that every male boss I've ever had. I've had to do that. Every landlord I've had to argue and to to get things fixed that I know are true. I mean, cops have done that to me. Firefighters have done that to me. Like it's, 
it's everybody. And so doing that again, it was a very Mercury retrograde thing of like, hey, guess what? You're going to confront this thing that you hate, Mm -hmm. which I did. And it sucked. But they it was cool because they didn't gaslight me. They're like, listen, it doesn't seem like a gas leak. But would you like us to send the gas company out to make super sure because they have different instruments than us? And I was like, yes, I would actually send them out because I did smell gas and my nose doesn't work. So the fact that I could smell it is a problem. But of course, then I'm second guessing myself, like, is it a spiritual smell? Did I just smell Mm -hmm. something that like, like, what, what is that? Um, and then the gas guy company came out and he was like, oh yeah, they totally installed your gas line wrong in your dryer. It's been leaking gas this whole time. I was like, Haha, he knew it, <laughs> which was really vindicating, but I didn't get gaslit. <laughs> um, <Right. I> didn't... <laughs> I've been trying not to giggle at that this whole time. I, <laughs> I didn't get gaslit, um, in the experience, which was again, very mercury retrograde for me. So that was, I think what I would say was my quintessential mercury retrograde experience. It's like something broke to fix something else on like four levels because now Mm -hmm. my dryer works which my dryer was already my villain origin story it only got worse and then it got better so that's nice um (laughs) so my dryer works so that was actually like physically fixed but then also like hey i had a good experience with authority and like that that made me confront a bunch of stuff so just like as an example if something like that came up for you what layers did you have to fix things on that is what Mercury does. Also, I am holding my breath and hoping that the lights on my dashboard that just came on on my car just magically turn off on Friday. So we'll see how that goes because I do not want to take it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and again, Mercury in Virgo, especially. <laughs> Virgo mm-hmm. is a healer by nature. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So you're going to be healing a lot of stuff. And and M, we were already saying like for you, that's 12th house stuff. So again, it's that mm-hmm. unconscious trauma stuff that bubbled up during Mercury retrograde. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Mercury also being very prominent for your chart because you are a sun with Gemini. So that's, it's a (laughs) thing. Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah. Um, So, you know, there's, there's a lot to look into and a lot of layers and a lot of ways that it gets super specific when you think about it. Yeah. So, but anyway, that was just my example that I think can help. Well, and, you know, thinking about what information have you received that changes things Mm -hmm. for you? Um, Yeah. Like I I remember, so last week was a really interesting week for me as well. And I was nervous because, you know, one of the biggest things you hear in folk magic is when should I get a surgery? Don't Mm -hmm. do it during the waning moon. Don't during, do it during uh, mercury retrograde. Uh, Don't do it with like a malefic in the 12th house or on an angle, something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. I had a minor surgical procedure. Like literally it's just a band aid now. It's all right. Um, But I had a minor surgical procedure with Mars in the 12th house, my 12th house and the charts 12th house, Mm -hmm. uh, Mercury retrograde and a waning moon. And I'm like, cool. So a waning moon typically means that you'll bleed a little bit more than usual. And it's like, okay. One thing that I did realize is, um, side note, we found out I have terrible circulation to my hands Mm -hmm. and my feet. So it's like bleeding or having blood flow more than usual would not be a bad thing in my case. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Actually having- As long as it's in your hands and feet. Other places, not so much, but hands and feet would be great. In the veins where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like right now (laughs) holding a bloodstone to help heal the bruise. Um, But yeah. So like, you know, even better circulation in the brain Mm -hmm. is better, you know? So I was Mm -hmm. like, "That, that might actually work to my unique benefit. Um, so, you know, it still worked out really well. We got good news, even though Mm -hmm. there's, you know, healing and stuff that has to happen after it. It just goes to show that even during a time, if you don't have a choice when it happens and it still needs to happen, go with it because Mm -hmm. you still have fate either on your side or someone who's working on you might have a really great aspect that day. And so they're working with you and you just don't know because you don't know their chart or something like that, or you reveal something that it fits the bill, but also works in your favor. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so yeah. So that's, that's one thing to think about, um, (laughs) with the whole like mercury retrograde and what to do and what not to do and the revelation of information, which now I'm getting pushed to, because I thought I talked myself out of it Mm -hmm. on mercury. I was waiting. I was like, it's coming. The day after this surgical procedure, I wasn't allowed to lift anything. I wasn't allowed to do much. Um, and my dad, who has been going through a transitional period as well, asked me for the umpteenth time and I I had been putting it off and he made it so easy for me not to this time. So I knew it was important for him. And I wanted to do that because like, I love my dad. We all know I love my dad. It's no secret on here. Um, Mm -hmm. So he wanted me to watch this documentary 
that was about a trip that my family went on in 2019. 2019 was an entirely different world. And at the time, I had no idea what was going to occur. You know, things mm-hmm. like um, certain political things had not arisen yet. And mm-hmm. so I didn't I didn't realize some of the stuff that was going on, but there was a trip that we took. And I want to be open and clear about this with everybody who's listening. So, and my dog's going to bark over me just to uh, make sure I'm loud enough. So we went on this trip to Israel, which was amazing. And again, a lot of people know I work with the energy of Jesus a lot. I work with Bracharai, which is uh, using a lot of biblical stuff as grimoires and and faith healing and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And it's my jam. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, going to, wow, there's nothing wrong with going to uh, a place to like explore that kind of stuff. However, I went with a certain celebrity family uh, that later I realized was not being helpful to more rational schools of thought in politics. Mm-hmm. And they were filming a documentary and we all had to sign a paper because even if you were just in a frame walking, you just needed to sign a paper that you were like, that's fine. Use the frame of us walking towards something. I got interviewed and I responded to a question on the Temple Mount after having just scolded one of the people for being really rude on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount, of course, is uh, where the Dome of the Rock is. So it's a pretty contested site between Jews, Muslims, and Christians. And this was a uh, pretty conservative Christian group. And so they had a lot of vocal opinions that they could have better kept to themselves in someone else's space. And I ended up telling them that. Um, and then right after one of the members of this, this influential family came up and interviewed me about my thoughts being here. And so still a little bit burned up from that interaction. I ended up saying, you know, I think one of the greatest things about faith is that you do get to struggle with your beliefs. And I think if we're supposed to find Jesus in a place like this, that is pretty contested, we're supposed to struggle with what that means. We're supposed to find and dis- and think about like, what would he have been doing here? How would he have been dealing with people and the way that they are trying to meet their own faith halfway or as far as they can go using a sacred location? They used part of that statement mm-hmm. in the documentary. They didn't use all of it. And I, I remember I can do verbatim because I did journal everything I said, um, mm-hmm. but they used part of it to build off one of their points, which ended up being political in a way that I do not personally lean. So if you ever encounter a documentary and you see a version of me that does not look like who I am today, because there's longer hair, there's a different everything, because I was trying to fit a certain um, gender profile <laughs> at the time. Uh, if you see that, just know that's not everything I said. And I was I was challenging them. And we actually, in personal times throughout the rest of the trip, did have little back and forths about citing resources and which news sources are reliable news sources. And are you sure about that? Um, but I, it didn't get fully represented in the most authentic way in that documentary. So I want to be honest about it uh, and just let you know that it's pretty much out of context. I'm not proud of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for anybody who sees it and is affected in a a way that they don't want to be affected. I don't know that I can do anything about it at this point because it's been years and the documentary only came out this year. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of complicated and hopefully it's part of the, it's part of a subscription platform. So only the people who are in that world may see it, uh, which are likely not the people who are part of my world today. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it stays there is mm-hmm. is my my wish. Um, but I want to make sure that we have some kind of documentation of the truth, mm-hmm. which, which Mercury is all about. Good job. <laughs> <clears throat> good job. Super valid. It's so interesting because we were <clears throat> friends at the time. We hadn't really started working together outside mm-hmm. of like just talking on Mooney's my old home. podcast once and twice a month. Um, but I remember debriefing with you after that trip and you were so mad. <laughs> I was so about the way everything went down. Like you're like, oh, the trip was beautiful. And you know, me and Dan got like re like renewed our vows, like in the Dead Sea and all these yeah. beautiful, like magical things. Also, these people like you were so <laughs> mad. It was great. So in case you're wondering, from my perspective, mm-hmm. Krista was not 
happy with how this trip shook out as far as the company that was unwittingly there. Mm-hmm. That was not something you signed up for. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a little sad too, because the people in my family who would have liked to have contributed a very helpful piece of mm-hmm. the, the documentary when they were interviewed, didn't make it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, come on. Like my mom is one of the most photogenic, wonderful in front of a camera people ever. And what she would have said would have been incredible and, you know, loving and right. And they didn't use things that she said. Instead, they took my image and used it probably to appeal to younger audiences and stuff or whatever. And I'm just feeling a little like, really guys, you know what you did. (laughs) I also think it's just kind of like a underhanded slight towards you because they knew Mm -hmm. that that was not your views and they wanted to say like it's just the vindictive bullshit that we're seeing a lot from that particular leaning side of the particular political spectrum at this point in time so and i find it very interesting because their core points that they made of like Mm -hmm. what's the problem with the world today why is religion falling apart and they were like it's because we don't have god and we don't have community and i'm like hmm you were so close to being right on something, but you're so bent on making this point that you took the right stuff and made it wrong. Mm -hmm. Like if we were all allowed to pursue a connection with meaning slash divinity in our own way, Mm -hmm. beautiful. We would all feel a lot safer. We would all feel a lot more seen. We would all be able to find our communities. And if we supported people who had different views, community would be easier to find. Mm -hmm. If we understood that there's like a truth that everyone comes to in their own way, which is in the Bible, by the way, um, then we would be doing great. Mm -hmm. But then you had to go throw political pictures and videos in there of certain people that just don't help the the point. And we all know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to dignify it with a name. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I'm proud of you for speaking. person. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I'm just proud of you for speaking your truth and your authenticity and like mm-hmm. honoring that. So good job. Because that's you. hard. Yeah, well, it's better than letting people be hurt by the alternative. So yeah. So yeah. good job. Um, but yeah, so this week we have the new moon, we have Mercury stationing mm-hmm. direct. Both of those will be pretty big and impactful. And we can start to look ahead to the eclipses sort of coming our way, which is also very interesting. Well, I think we have a full moon in between, don't we? Um, we Yeah, so we are going through a new moon right now in Virgo. Next thing we'll get is the full moon, which will be in Aries. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, the nodes are in Aries. They are. But this uh, full moon is going to happen more than 15 degrees away from the node. So it's not going to be an eclipse. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get the first eclipse as a solar eclipse in Libra when the sun gets in there and the moon meets it. Then we're going to have a lunar eclipse in Taurus. That's where we'll find the lunar eclipse because that will be closer to the node, which is at the end of Aries. Um, After that, though, you are correct if you are guessing that we will have Libra and Aries eclipses for the next year and a half or so. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) The Libra rising. Yeah. <laughs> no, it'll be good. I'm excited about it. Um, awesome. We do have a quick question in the Patreon. Do we have time Ooh. to answer? Are you good? I've got time. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, the question is, do you have any favorite resources for dream interpretation or where to begin dream interpretation? So I was, I've actually been exploring this more myself. Um, I don't mm-hmm. have a, a preferred book right now because so many dream interpretation like i'm an ancient preference person we don't have a lot of ancient dream interpretation stuff that no. i'm aware of if you know of one please comment what it is and i will explore it because i'm excited about that um however no. one thing i do know that was done in folk practices folk magic practices was someone would record their dreams regularly and then mm-hmm. record what happened that day And then they would notice when I dream about this, I'm getting a letter that day. When I dream about this, this is happening. That way you Mm -hmm. can actually decode your own dream symbolism. It does take some time to build up, um, but that's a way that you can build your own dream resource. In the meantime, I recommend like, if you're like that dream meant something and I don't have uh, a guide on it, Mm -hmm. ask yourself, what does this symbolically mean to me? How do I feel about this? What's the feeling surrounding it? Um, Do a card pool for extra stuff Mm -hmm. because if you are concerned about something you deserve to be able to get answers as soon as possible dreams are so symbolic i tend to go personal first you can Mm -hmm. also of course google 
Uh, there's a lot of psychological websites that will say people tend to dream about this when this happens. Um, so you yeah. can find sources that feel resonant for you, but always check your sources and make sure they're good ones. You don't want to scare yourself unnecessarily. Yeah. And I will say too, I, I fully agree with that. I'm actually including um, kind of a big unit in my, I'm building a digital course right now about decoding your personal universe, like figuring out how right. the universe communicates with you so you can communicate with it. It's basically like making your own cipher for the universe. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm really thrilled about it. So I'm working on building that right now. And I do have a whole unit on using dream symbols and symbology for your own personal cipher kind of deal. Um, so there is that coming out in the next month or two. Um, so you can look forward to that. I will say on, in my experience, personal dream understanding far outweighs collective dream understanding, meaning even the work of like Carl Jung and things like that, that are mm -hmm. out there don't typically align as much as we'd like them to. It's kind of the same way with when you see an angel number and you're like, what does this number mean? And then you're like, I don't know. There's like 17 different interpretations. Which one's the right <laughs> one? What are they trying to do? I'm like, most of the time it's your guy trying to be like, hello. Mm -hmm. this is you good job you did great whatever it's a very personal journey too um so i do think that keeping a dream journal is super helpful um because then you can start to look back on patterns and again figure out what happened that day um that's super duper helpful also quite literally setting an intention before you go to bed i remember my dreams or i understand my dream tonight or something like that and it takes practice to do that i'm not going to say like it's super easy right off the bat but it, it's a really effective tool um if used consistently and with dedication. Yeah. So that's another way to really start understanding your dreams. Mm -hmm. That would be my, my two cents there too. Again, I don't really have a book. I've read a bunch of them, but I don't have a book that I like for it. Yeah. So I've never found a book that I'm like, you get it. So I, I don't have yeah. a, one that I want to recommend. Yeah, I agree. But we hope that helps you all. And thank you all so much for being here. Um, happy Mercury direct. Yay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And yeah, we definitely have a fun topic coming up next week that we're excited to chat with you about. And then you get to see us in person mm -hmm. the week after that, which will also be fun. Yes. Um, yeah. And of course, we hope that you take all of this energy and the closing of Mercury Retrograde and you go make, go some, make magic. some magic. Okay. Now, um, if everybody's on YouTube, that should have been off because it was off okay. for me. Was it off for you? No, it was on for me. Okay. Because last week they said we got it really good. So guys, weigh in. Let us know. How are we doing? We're trying to calibrate a new Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, I got super speedy Wi-Fi and we don't know how it's affecting us yet. So <laughs> Mercury. Yay. Yay. <laughs>